Okay, this is going to be a quick demonstration of how uh, Creosun is currently being kind of laid out as a framework. In this case, we're going to be demonstrating a Node.js application running JavaScript uh, to communicate remotely with a machine. Um, in this case, we're running a virtual machine uh, running Windows 7 and Creo 3 uh, from an Apple Macintosh. So the Mac environment's kind of out here and the Windows environment's over here. You can see Creo's up and running. This is just a folder where we have some demo files that we're going to be playing with. And we to get Creosan running, we have a, a small little bat file that's uh, localized to this version of Creo. Uh, that when you start it up, it just makes the uh, library sets up or sets up the libraries to talk to Creo from there. Uh, to actually get this to communicate, um, that one thing we need to do is uh, we need to kind of set up a first connection. Now, um, this being Node.js, we created a small module. Uh, that has all of the necessary functions in it. And in this case, we're just going to be loading that module into something called Creosan, which we're going to call over and over and over again. And then we have a file object. The file object is basically just uh, contains all of the data structures that are possible for the JSON data that we're going to send back and forth to the server and to ultimately to Creo. And then we have it doing things like uh, what are the valid commands, um, you know, what type of options are available, what type of format they should be, you know, things of that nature. So it looks a little complicated. It's going to vary depending on the language you want to use uh, as to how you set this up. This is just how we've kind of set it up for our example. You could do it a lot simpler if you want to. It'd be more direct. Uh, but this is set up for reusing things and, and uh, customizing them as you go. So the first thing we do is we uh, create our connection uh, to Creo remotely. Then... Uh, we're going to call another function um, that simply allows us to um, you know get into the process so now that we've established our connection to creo now we want to actually do something so in this case i'm going to create uh, i'm going to use this file object and i'm going to configure it uh, to say i want to let's see i want to do a function called open and the next question is what do we want to open so we're going to configure that same object again uh, to say, well, I want to open uh, a file by a name called speaker.asm. Now the uh, next question is, okay, how do I run that? Well, it's going to run uh, this uh, if we type in uh, creosan.callcreo in this case. And we want to send it that file object that we were just configuring. Now that in and of itself is would work in um, just basically right there, but we want to do some more with it. I want to capture the data that's coming back and forth. So in this case, I'm going to return the results of that and I'm going to send it into another function. After that process runs, I want it to send in the results of that to another function and send the data back. In this case, we're just going to report the data. So I'm just going to type in console log, which is JavaScript's way of logging information. And I'm just going to log the data out to uh, the little log viewer down here. Now, um, let's also do that for the data when we send, so we can see what's going on. In this case, we're going to we're going to look at what are we sending. So we're ready to run right now. So the this uh, simple little script, all it's doing is opening a file named speaker assembly after it connects to the remote session. So when I press this run button, you'll notice that it's made the connection. And the very first time it connects, it takes a second to kind of establish the connection to the Creo kernel. But uh, it's opened and activated that file and made it uh, display uh, by default. So you saw, you see the transactions that have occurred here. And if we look at the, the transaction log, you notice here is the uh, the JSON data that was sent uh, to open uh, the speaker assembly. And you can see there's some defaults that we've set up, like activate it and display it for true. Uh, and then also here is the uh, the response that came back. So we can see that it came back with no errors. It brought back the very first revision of that speaker. And it tells me where on the system uh, that file is currently located. So um, that's pretty much uh, just how this is works. This is a JavaScript specific example, but the principles that you see here for sending the JSON data back and forth are, are really straightforward and uh, very easy to use across multiple languages and environments.